Well, we did not accept the $8,000 and we challenged their discontinuing the claim in court. And there was a court hearing back in April of this year, which issued, then there was a written decision on the 1st of June of this year. And the court said this, the property manager, and this is, I'm reading from the decision, the property manager took actions against this poor woman and her son that were never authorized by the board. Board resolutions were lacking. Fines were imposed when only a warning letter had been authorized by the board. Fines were also imposed in excess of what was allowed under the bylaws and the legislation. Certainly, some but not all of the actions taken against the owner were done based on only circumstantial evidence. So what became very clear is that this particular property manager did things without proper board resolutions. And what was also more dis disappointing was that even when there was a board resolution, the property manager ignored the resolution and did what they thought was more appropriate. The, corp the court ultimately found that the actions of the corporation was uh, improper and uh, granted said, that's fine, you can end this lawsuit condominium corporation, but you're not paying only $8,000 in costs. At the end of the day, the court ordered $40,000 to be paid to my client in legal costs that the corporation in, that forced my corp client to incur as a result of this law, ill thought out lawsuit. So what that means, if you do the math, what, what you, and on top of that, the court also said this, hey, condominium corporation, if you have, do not have the money to pay those costs to that poor owner, those legal costs because of your actions, and you have to issue a special levy, that's fine, but that particular owner will be excluded from that special levy. So in other words, all the other owners will be paying the special levy, but not this owner because they are specifically excluded. And what that will mean then, you have one less owner to get money from, which means that the other owners will be paying more than their usual share because the court said, it's not fair to have her pay a proportion of those costs. So when you do the math, when you do the math, if the legal fees that my client incurred and, and was entitled to $40,000 of reimbursement, if you add another 40 plus that the corporation would have incurred, the corporation spent over $80,000, over $80,000 in legal fees and didn't get the result they even wanted. The owner is still there, the dog is still there, and the son is still there. And all of the fines have been expunged from her ledger. So here, here's, here's my advice to you on this case. Number one, I appreciate sometimes these issues get very heated and the board wants to act swiftly and send a message. I get that. But remember, fines are not used or should not be used to punish people. Fines should be used to change behavior. And if, you, if you're using the fine method, as this board was, this corporation was, to punish someone, this will not end well for you. I look at, for example, the typical photo radar. Photo radar, the whole purpose of getting a photo radar ticket is to change your behavior. When you get it in the mail, you change your behavior. At least for me, it does. For, the, for a very short or medium term, I now know there's a photo radar camera on that particular street. I slow down all the time now. I'll probably forget six, seven months down the road, but that's the whole purpose. And if you have a respectful owner 
they will recognize their error and they will change their behavior. But what was interesting in this case is that their evidence, even their evidence of the dog doing its business on common property was circumstantial. They had no one who could definitively say it was that dog by, of that owner. And so what I say to you is this, when you have a scenario like this, you are now entering the arena of legal issues. And your property manager, as talented as they are, are limited in terms of giving you legal advice. And so don't put that on your property manager. It's unfair to ask your property manager to give you advice of a legal nature. That's when you need to say to your property manager, we need help. Are we going down the right path? Are we allowed to do this? Because for this condominium corporation, in addition to paying my client $40,000 in legal fees, and they have to pay their own lawyer too. And so when you do the math, that's a lot of money for nothing. And if I were an owner in that building, I'd be asking a lot of questions of that board saying, how could you possibly get sucked into a particular lawsuit when at the end of the day, your evidence was circumstantial? And more importantly, more importantly, you weren't even following proper pro process. And I'll make one final comment and then I'll move on to my next case and then open the floor to some great questions. Boards can only act by board resolution. The board president does not have the authority to unilaterally tell the property manager to do X, Y, and Z. The property manager should immediately say, I can't do that without a board resolution. And I'm talking about steps of substance. The board president can definitely say to the property manager, hey, can you email me the financials from 2018? I don't have them on my system here. Property manager can definitely do that. That's, that's not board direction that requires a resolution. But if you're going to issue a fine, the board president cannot tell the property manager, issue a fine to Charlie Brown in unit 202 for, for whatever reason, for the full amount. At that point, the, board pre the property manager needs to say, stop, I need a board resolution for me to act. And that's how it's done. And this particular condo didn't do it well. 